Hey everyone, I got a different kind of video for you. I'm not at a museum, I'm not talking about a specific plane, and it's not even really an important topic, but... So you've read the title of the video. I mean, you probably did. If you didn't, then I'm so sorry Autoplay put me in your video feed. But for those of you who know what you're here for, you might be a bit surprised when I say I want to start by talking, no, ranting about unnecessary military projects. So I started thinking about this when I saw this article about how the UK is making the world's first sixth generation fighter jet. And I thought about how stupid that was, because if you think about fifth generation aircraft, there's only like five of them. And I looked more into what aircraft are being built for the sixth generation. And they're the same as the ones we have now. Don't even get me started on how many of these new aircraft are just F-22 lookalikes. And moving on to the sixth generation, nothing is changing. Take this guy, for example. Let me sum up this 4,000-word Wikipedia article. They want a stealth-shaped aircraft that uses thrust vectoring to achieve high maneuverability and comes stocked with powerful computers. Does any of that sound next-gen to you? Oh, and look at this guy. This guy's got some real nerve walking in here the way he does. The B-2 Spirit is already the most expensive aircraft ever. Only 21 of them were built, and they were only ever used to bomb terrorists in caves. And now the U.S. military says, Oh no, it's, it's not good enough. It's time for a better one. And they commission this. Yeah? Uh, yeah? Yeah! What? What is the point of you? Why do you exist? It's literally the same plane made by the same people. It even looks the same. It's just going to be more expensive. I don't care how many fancy 3D renders you make. If your aircraft just uses better versions of existing technology the same way, it's not next gen. Then I see this thing, and now I think the universe is just laughing at me. Because if you know me personally, you know I've been saying for years that what the military should be doing, instead of making expensive fighter jets, is just take the existing conventional stuff and put new computers in them. Because that's all modern combat really needs. And to be honest, I like this. The F-1 sex is a good... Oh. Oh, sorry. No, it's the F-15 EX. That's, that's my bad. But then I see this... Whoop! Just because I take a USB stick full of turtle pictures and put it in a laptop doesn't make it a new laptop design! And at this point I'm about to break down and start making noises like a goddamn Geonosian. So I go full circle and look into the Tempest again to see what makes it so special. Huh. Okay, hang on a minute. We might actually have something worthwhile here. Some of these features are actually new. And this got me thinking about what actually defines fighter generations. Finally, we can actually get to the thing I want to talk about today. So if you ask official sources, fighter generations only count towards jets. But if you ask me, the differences in generations are kind of arbitrary. Like, if I take an F-4 Phantom and give it thrust vectoring, what generation is it now? What if I take an F-22 Raptor and give it a radar from an HE-219? Now what generation is it? What if I take a MiG-21 and give it a propeller, but also radar-absorbent paint? And then there's these claims of Generation 4.5 or Generation 4++ fighters, which... Uh, no. The system is arbitrary, incomplete, and vague. It needs to be changed. And I have an idea for a new generation system that consistently defines the way all fighter aircraft perform combat not just jets. It's definitely one of the least interesting parts of aircraft design, but it's honestly the complexity of this technology that shapes air combat, and that is information communication. Now, I'd like to go through history while defining my proposal for the new generations of fighters. Starting all the way at the dawn of flight, the wooden canvas biplanes of the First World War were about as combat capable as a dune buggy with a fire axe duct taped to the hood. You also basically couldn't talk to anyone once your engine was started. The only way the first fighters could communicate was through hand signals. That's generation one. No tech, just you and your ability to wave your hands around like a cheerleader. As the years went on, some clever dudes figured out how to mount telegraphs and other basic radios onto the aircraft. 
This would get refined in the interwar years, and it quickly became standard issue to have radios in every cockpit. Now you could easily talk to commanders at your airfield, or gunners on the other side of large aircraft, or directly to mobile units on the ground requesting air support. Also, this will come as a surprise to nobody when I say that the invention of radar changed the game in World War II. In the early days, radar technology was pretty much only good with either massive radars used to detect massive formations, or small radars that were pretty much only useful for finding things at night when it's pitch black out. But it still made it possible to be aware of things you couldn't even see, and it cannot be understated how important that is. There were also a very select few experiments that had large radars mounted on bombers, which would patrol around and alert fighters if they detected incoming contacts, which basically made them into the first AWACS aircraft, which is pretty neato. It's also a very revolutionary idea, but we're going to get back to that later. For now, just know that this all pretty much defines Gen 2. Aircraft with the ability to communicate across large distances or through tough conditions. Generation 3 is where things get interesting. At this point, radar is advanced enough to the point where they're better than just being glorified rangefinders slash very inefficient flashlights. It's now I want to explain what I mean when I say information communication defines the generations. Because we think of communication as words and talking, but machines can communicate with us too, just in a different way. For example, the noises your car makes communicates to you that you should have listened to the mechanic. And now that almost all fighters have radars, machines could communicate some pretty complicated stuff. Like I said, original radars really just told you, hey, uh, something is probably in that direction, might be a rain cloud, might be a formation of 100 kamikazes, don't really know. But now technology is advancing to the point where your radar can lock onto a contact, it can tell you the target's speed, it can tell you the target's heading, it can tell you whether or not the contact is transmitting a friendly IFF signal, it can tell you if you're being tracked by someone else's radar, it can tell you how much lead to put on your target in order for your bullets to hit it, it can talk to another computer inside of a rocket and tell it how to fly to a radar contact and then tell the rocket exactly when to explode. Need I go on? Yeah, radars very quickly went from being a commodity to being a necessity. If you're not bringing a radar, IFF, and guided weapons into battle, it's the equivalent of bringing a reserve plane into a 10.0 match of War Thunder. Yeah. No way, I could probably actually kill... <laughs> but if you're doing that in real life, then... I mean, it's still funny, but like... Anyway, yeah, Gen 3 is defined by systems that automate combat functions for the pilot. Contact tracking, threat alerts, guiding weapons, cool stuff. Moving on to 4th Gen, and we start seeing aircraft that we would consider modern or standard. F-15s, MiG-29s, Mirage 2000s, you get the idea. We also get this guy. This guy. This guy is cooler than cool. The other side of the pillow wishes it could be this cool. This thing is so cool, the more of them we build, the closer we are to solving global warming. You want to know why Project Wingman is cooler than every single Ace Combat game out there? Okay, it's because of Prez. But AWACS Galaxy is top shelf material too, don't get me wrong. <clears throat> what a man. <clears throat> anyway, the idea of having something like an AWACS had been in the works for a long time. I told you we'd get back to this. And in Vietnam, it got very, very close to the modern usage. Basically, there was this designated naval radar picket called Red Crown, which would alert U.S. aircraft to incoming fighters, guide you to an aerial tanker, give you mission updates, or if you got shot down, they'd have your most recent position saved, and they would quickly send a search and rescue chopper, no matter what military branch you were flying with. They could even have other radar pickets upload their data to expand Red Crown's search range. And this is what I mean when I say Red Crown is almost like the modern AWACS. Because yes, naval radars can upload their data, but no aircraft could download anything from Red Crown. All Red Crown can do is make suggestions to the aircraft they're talking to, like, hey, there's four MiGs heading towards you, please do something about that. In Gen 4 aircraft, though, they can get data directly from the AWACS. Generation 4 is defined by the introduction of data link technology. 
not only can a fighter lock onto a radar contact that only the AWACS can see, a fighter aircraft could lock onto a radar contact that the AWACS can't see, but a different aircraft can. And if the first aircraft fires a missile, the second aircraft can take up the job of helping guide it to the target. This isn't just limited to aircraft either. Ground bases or infantry or submarines or basically anything can upload or download data. This is incredible because it means a fighter jet has access to an entire tactical network of information, just like how you use your friends and family's login info to watch streaming sites. Except less embarrassing. Come on, man. I know that hits close to home, but like, uTorrent isn't that hard to figure out. And now we've reached the fifth generation of fighters. The current latest and greatest aircraft are all stealthy and their cockpits look like they would be labeled with the Stark Industries logo, but I won't be classifying Gen 5 aircraft with simple buzzwords like advanced or smart technology. To me, the fifth generation is defined by what I'd like to call function unity and function denial. Starting with the easy one, function denial is technology that prevents the operation or purpose of unfriendly equipment from working. So that would be something like how stealth aircraft don't show up on radar, or how AESA radars can negate jamming equipment. Function unity is the way different computers communicate with each other to perform one purpose. For example, an infrared camera, a radar, and a laser designator working together to show a pilot exactly where a target is. Or the way aircraft equipped with firewire can transmit and relay data at high speeds, which basically turns the F-22 into a flying Wi-Fi router. And just a quick caveat before I move on, since I bashed the current generation system with the whole what if you swap components argument, I'm sure there's a handful of you typing away saying that my system does the same thing, and you could just make any plane a Gen 5 by loading an advanced computer onto it. And to that, I say Gen 5 has to have both factors of function denial and unity to make the cut. Sure, plenty of aircraft have AESA radars, but aren't stealth, or are just old aircraft being upgraded with really nice computers. And despite what my mad ramblings might have looked like at the start of this video, I'm pretty happy to have a 4.5 generation classification. Uh, 4 plus plus though is totally egregious, and whoever thought up that idea is a sham of a man. But with how many nations are refining 4th gen designs instead of building 5th gen aircraft, I think it's totally reasonable to suggest the idea that half generations can be a thing. This is brilliant, <laughs> but I like this. And with that said, it's time to discuss the 6th generation that's apparently on its way. Two questions. First, is Gen 6 coming soon? And if so, what will be its features? For the first question, I do not think it's coming soon. The reason I say that is because of the fiasco that is the F-35. The design for a stealth jump jet originated from the 80s, and the situation it was designed for never came. And here we are, 30 plus years later, just trying to justify the price tag. I'm just not sure what task a Gen 6 fighter would need to do. But when they do come, if I had to guess what technology would be focused on, I'm going to predict something I'll call an electromagnetic revolution will occur. I think aircraft will really prioritize software performance over flight performance, and we will see avionics not just process data, but simulate an entire battle space. It also pains me to say it, because I really get annoyed hearing sound bites and seeing news articles about how computers are the future of warfare. And as much as I hate buzzwords like AI and drones, there will almost certainly be AI-controlled drones flying in support positions and probably even into combat side-by-side -side with the meat-controlled drones. What else could there be? Directed energy weapons are still being talked about a lot, so everyone is either really close to figuring it out or just copying each other's wish list. Eh, 50-50 odds anything actually happens with that. Railgun technology is going nowhere fast. It's a cool idea, but without a huge breakthrough, and I mean really huge, it's just not going to be worth it. While I was researching the Mitsubishi FX, they mentioned this thing called a plasma stealth antenna, which I guess basically makes a field of plasma that disrupts radar waves, effectively making anything more stealthy. Very little research has gone into this technology as far as I can tell, but it's certainly interesting. One thing I would like to see is cyber warfare from the cockpit. I imagine it'd be really funny to just fly over an enemy recon unit and drop a fat zip bomb on their network. Or maybe you hack into an enemy jet's operating system and activate the jettison weapons function. 
I also think a really clever way to counter stealth aircraft could be magnetic missiles, where they would hone in on strong magnetic fields, i.e. an advanced aircraft sensors and computers. Probably hard to do, but I think it would be neat. This is all just me theorizing anyway. At the end of the day, we can't know what the future holds. But I do know I very much prefer my system to the arbitrary version some people are using now. This is probably only an issue to me. If some of you think I've given a compelling argument, I'd love to discuss it with you. But I think I might be wasting my time talking about this thing that is ultimately a non-issue. Then again, the reason I make videos is to tell stories to viewers. So if you're still here listening, I guess the burden of wasted time falls to you. No refunds.